whether it's high fashion, the latest tech, or fresh fruit and vegetables, it's all available on Harare's pavements. Vending has become the only way to make a living for many who've been pushed onto the streets by growing joblessness. But their livelihood has set them on a collision course with local authorities who want the city cleaned up. Last December, the city of Harare started sprucing up this space, repainting it and introducing artwork as part of an inner city renewal drive. But this is not the vision they had in mind. This whole area has been overrun by hundreds of vendors and all the beautiful artwork now going unnoticed. A seven-day ultimatum to ship out has riled vendors who see their survival under threat. Half a loaf is better than nothing. I don't make much, but at least if I come on the streets and vend, I can make a dollar. That's more than I could have gotten sitting at home. Right now we're having xenophobia in South Africa. Some people, uh, some of our fellow brothers, they're coming from South Africa, coming here. There's no industry here. So what do you expect for them to do once they are here? I want to be told here is a job for you before I move off the streets. The city says it has. 14,000 stalls have been set up. Not enough, though, for the 20,000-plus vendors. With no let-up in sight, some here are already planning for the inevitable. I will move into the smaller towns and suburbs and start selling door-to-door. -door. But that could push up operating costs for a business that has small margins and that thrives on the CBD's heavy human traffic. A previous attempt to expel street vendors failed after First Lady Grace Mugabe ordered that they be left alone. But that was last August, before their numbers had reached the current levels. There are vending sites named in her honor, and some who do their business here told me they want her to come to their rescue again. Farai Mwakutuya, CCTV, Harare, Zimbabwe.